Hello everyone, it's Adam Rattler with Adam So Fun, and today I'm sitting here in my dungeon. I have all the lights off, um, but it's because we're gonna be talking ta 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 texture. Um, I get a lot of questions about how should I quilt this, and you know, when I'm teaching, people will bring quilts, which is not my favorite thing to do because I have a very unique way of like coming up with designs and quilts, and I can't initially look at a quilt and be like, oh, this is how you should quilt it. I'm very much one of those people people who hangs it on a wall, looks at it for a little bit, and then the design kind of just pops into my head. Um, but I, I, I always like to help. So, you know, we'll talk it out. You know, we'll talk about bringing elements from the quilts and stuff. Um, but sometimes I see quilts that, although someone might want to do a lot of custom work and a lot of custom quilting on, it just is going to you're gonna lose it. You're gonna lose all the quilting. Maybe the pattern's really busy, or maybe there's um, there the the negative space is really dark. And when you stitch things like that, which we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna show you some examples today. Um, but when you stitch things like that, you spend a lot of time stitching out like these really great designs, but then you can never see them in the finish the finished quilt because. It's just either it's too busy or it's too dark. So um, I quilted out a bunch of samples. I have to give a shout out. Thank you to Quiltable, to the um, team over at Quiltable. Um, I was in contact with them. Again, I was testing some of their stuff before they launched and I'm continuing to test and stuff. And um, I knew I wanted to make this texture video and talk about this topic. And they just released um, sets of I think there are sets of 10 designs and you can get them um, six by six nine by nine or 12 by 12 and um, I sent them an email I was like hey I these are perfect designs for what I want to do would you mind sending me over a few so I could do that and um, so shout out to them because the design that I used today um, they sent me it stitched out great and I stitched out a lot and it it's the I love a background feel. I love a background feel when I don't have to think about it or do it. Um, granted, I do like to free motion, but sometimes, you know, it's really nice to just ding, 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 and skew that design right into that, um, right into that area using our Pro Stitcher or whatever automated um, program you have. But always, um, thank you for joining me. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell icon so you're notified when those new videos drop. Um, follow me on Facebook and Instagram, Adam So Fun, and that's S E W. And it's Adam So Fun everywhere. So just keep an eye out. Um, trying to grow everything. I'm slowly growing everything. So um, it's nice. And for all of you who are putting things on social media about the videos and how they're helping you, thank you so much. That that's why I do it. That's what that's what we do it for. So um, let's jump into this. All right. So the design I used is called Swirls and Stripes. This is the 12 by 12 block, and I think I actually well wait no i used the nine by nine so i've used two i'm gonna um show you the swirls and stripes i used the nine by nine block but i um enlarged it to 10 by 10 because i wanted to stitch about 10 by 10 and then the last example i used the scales background feel um that is a 12 by 12 and i just left it 12 by 12. um so here is the first one so we're going to talk about negative space so first if we're stitching on negative space, um, you should be able to see this. I kind of messed around with the lighting, which is why all the lights are off. Uh, but if you can't, I'll also take a picture so you can kind of see it up close and I'll just superimpose it on when I'm, when I'm talking. But, um, so this is the, uh, the swirls and stripes design. Um, again, I enlarged it to 10 by 10 from nine by nine. Um, this is just kind of a, uh, I don't even know what blue this is. A true blue. I'm gonna call it a true blue. Um, I can see the texture really good. I'm pretty sure you can see the texture there pretty well. Um, when you're working in the negative space and you have a color, you have to be aware of like what that quilting is going to do to that color. So you should be able to see this pretty good. It's not, it's not hard to see. Um, you can see the swirls in there. You can see the straight lines. Um, I did use matching thread. I bottom line on all of these, but I tried to match it other than if I just use the, uh, my favorite color, 623 silver. But, um, so it was just a blue thread, a matching, um, matching the fabric. And this is something I would do. If I was quilting this blue, I know because of this and because we can see that texture, if I spent time and did a really fun design in that blue, it's going to look good. It, we're, we're okay. We're not going to be losing anything. Um, I'm going to show you the back of one now because I used a light color for the back. 
There's a little bit of texture. Um, but can you see the difference? Can you see how easy this is to see on this light color? You see all of the detail. You see all of the definition. If you have something like a light gray or a white or a pale color, you're really going to see all that definition that you quilt into it, um, even when you match threads. So you get a ton of texture here that you can see um, with minimal effort. So, you know, it's not like you have to go in with a different color thread or do anything special. If you stitch it, you can see it. So I love, uh, I'm not a huge fan. I don't use a lot of white in my um, backgrounds. I like to have some type of color, but um, depending on what I want to do with those backgrounds, I'm going to try to use something a little bit lighter. It just doesn't have to be white um, if I want to go in and stitch that negative space. But this is what that light area looks like. Now let's pretend we had a darker color on here. Now this is still blue. This is uh, a, like a Royal Navy blue with fuzz on it. Um, you should be able to see the texture a little bit, not as good as we could see it on this one, but a little bit there. And the darker those colors get, the less likely you're gonna be able to see the stitching there. Um, now I'm gonna say this because I'm always telling you, do what you want. If it, if it works for you, you should continue to do it. Um, I spent a lot of time, I did a quilt for a friend and, um, I did, I was just quilting it. I needed to long arm something when we were moving to Cleveland and I said, can I please long arm these quilts for you? And, um, they were not huge, little wall hangings, like 40 by 40. And I spent a lot of time quilting places that were really dark you know, that I knew you wouldn't be able to see, but one, it brought me joy and it was good. I knew it was going to bring joy to the person who was getting it. Um, if she looked at it, I mean, you had to get pretty close to see all the detail. I did really fancy feather work, but to me it was worth it because I knew who it was going to and I was doing it for a specific reason. I knew she would appreciate it and I wanted to. So I'm just giving you ideas of like when to spend time, when not to, but that doesn't mean you can't do it. If it's, if it's something you really want to quilt and you want to spend that time on, please do it. Don't think, oh, well, Adam said I shouldn't. No, no, no. That's not what this is for. This is just to show you when the time you spend in might not pay off as much as you want, but when it's a, when it's a love thing and all of that, it always pays off. So do do you do your quilting just keep in mind okay i might be spending all this time and not be able to see it really well but you know you did it and that's you know at the end of the day that's what matters so here's a darker color dark blue you can't see it as good as the lighter blue you definitely can't see it as good as that really light blue but you can still kind of see that definition a little bit and i have light set up so you can see it a little better so we'll see now here's a black and this is actually not a true black. There's a little bit of a pattern to this black. You almost can't see what's going on. Um, if you can, it's because I have really great lighting set up. So it's, we're getting the shadows there. But um, with, in black, you almost can't see that texture. I mean, you can feel it. I could put my hand on here. I can see the texture great because I have the lighting coming straight over and hitting it. But... Um, I, I'll have to see again when I get to the um, when I get to the screen and I will take some different pictures so you can see what I'm talking about when you can't see it when you can see it but um you just might not be able to see that quilting as much if you have a black background if you're stitching um, a black negative square and maybe you want to stitch a nine patch into it you're not really gonna see that definition as well because it's a darker fabric it's just it just doesn't show like a light or a white would. So, um, so here's our black, here's our little bit of texture. All right, so let's talk about fabric choices. So here's the fabric. You should be able to see the texture okay. It's not gonna be the best because there's other things going on. So you should be able to pick up the swirls a little bit and the lines a little bit. It might be a little bit distorted because you do have some big flowers going on here and things, but, um, you're still going to be able to pick it up a, a, a little bit. It's not going to be jumping out at you. It's not like when it was the light blue, but you can still see it a little. Now, the next one is a very busy fabric. So this is a very busy fabric. It's something I use on the back of my, um, do I want it to go like this? So they're all hanging the right way. Um, it's a bat. I use this on the back of a, um, of class samples and things. 
Can you even see the texture there? You might, just a tiny bit. I'm gonna have to go back and check this later. But when you have something busy like this, you're, you're, you're not gonna be able to see it. You're almost wasting your time if you spend all of, you know, all of the time quilting that. Again, if it makes you happy, then go for it. But just be aware, you might not be able to see anything. Um, I find this with cave a lot. I love cave fabric. It's really pretty. Um, I don't use it, but I like to look at it. And when I quilt cave stuff, um, I always let people know like, hey, this fabric is really busy, X, Y, and Z. We might not be able to see some quilting. So maybe you don't want me to spend or you don't want to spend X amount of money getting this quilted if you won't be able to enjoy that quilting. Now, usually if someone's using cave, they're also using something else to um, kind of break up the busyness of the fabric. And you can go to town in those areas. The, the, the areas that kind of relax your eye from that fabric, feel free to quilt them. Um, and then do just some, some type of stitch in the, um, in the busy parts of the fabric. Um, sometimes I actually, I'll just go in and kind of trace the flowers and it gives a, it gives a lot of texture and you get, you're actually bringing the texture out of that fabric instead of adding a different texture to the quilt. So you're, you're using the elements that are already in that fabric. So that's always a good application, but something like this, I mean, you know, these blocks have a lot of stitching. There's a lot of stuff going on here and we just can't really see most of it in this because of how busy that fabric is. So I did one and this was, this one was stitched. Let's see if I can even get it up here. It's so long. So this was stitched and now you can kind of see how the different colors work. I don't know if you can see the whole thing. So I'm going to slide it this way. Um, basically, how it's going to look on the different colors and we can notice the quilting a little better on this side than on this side again i have good lighting set up so you can see it especially for the video um but if you're looking at this straight on you might be able to see this side a little easier than this side just because it gets a little darker and it's not su it's not super dark i mean we're not going black you know it didn't get this dark but it still does get a little bit darker so um things like this Again, what what are we going to quilt? How are we going to quilt it? And um, are we going to be able to see it? So, and this is the same design. I just went to my repeat, added an extra repeat. They are not edge to edge designs. So it didn't stitch and then go right into the other one. There was a tie off and a jump, but they did connect very nicely in the, in the center. And so, yeah, so here's that. And then the last thing I want to talk about is when you're quilting the texture, especially when you're using background fills or an edge to edge, you really have to think about the design, the scale of your of your um, edge to edge and um, what that might do to the quilt. Are you accentuating the quilt or are you just showing the quilting? So I threw this together yesterday. A simple little kind of uh, nine patch blocks. And um, this is another, one of the other background fills. It's called scales. And this was 12 by 12 and I just stitched it out 12 by 12. Um, and what you'll notice is that that fill kind of takes over this block. It, when you, the first thing you see, like sitting here, the only thing I see are those scales. I don't really see the nine patches. I don't see the piecing I did. I see the texture from those scales. And um, you have to be careful that when you're choosing a design, scale really matters. Maybe if I made those clamshell scales a little bigger, they, um, they wouldn't take over as much, but it really does. The first thing I see when I see this are those clamshells are this is the scale background. I don't see the nine patches I made. Um, and I did make this block specifically to do this. Um, I've seen quilts like this where you look at the quilt and you don't see the quilt, you see the quilting and, um, some, you know, especially if it's not your quilt. You don't want to take over that quilt. We're here to accentuate the quilt that people make. We want to um, bring out the quilt and bring it to life, give it some three-dimensional look and, you know, texture. Um, we don't want to overpower it. We don't want to overpower something like this, especially maybe this is something that their grandmother made. And, you know, you go and throw a design on it 
and all they see is what you did. They don't see what their grandma did anymore. So we have to be careful with, with um, things like that as long arm quilters. Um, but it's just thinking about the design. What design might look good on this, especially when we're doing edge to edge. Um, if I was custom quilting this, I, it'd be a whole different bag. I'd go in and I would um, accentuate the blocks that they stitched and do some really fun stuff in the negative space, especially with this color. This is that same color that was on the back of the other ones. Um, in that negative space, I would do something really fun because you're going to really see it. So I would do something that would allow grandma's blocks to pop and grandma's quilt to pop. So, um, so that's it for today. Um, I just really want to talk about texture and when to think about the designs and when to spend time, when, when to spend time quilting that negative space, if that's something you're looking into, um, thinking about how you're going to quilt it if you're using edge to edge and re and remember, just because the quilt's done doesn't mean it has to go get loaded on that um, long arm and quilted that same day. Granted, when I'm working on a quilt, I'm always thinking about, oh, how might I quilt this? You know, it's part of the process of me thinking while I'm piecing it. But um, if you have a quilt and you're just not sure, um, there's products out there to help you. This is a quilter's preview paper. It's a roll of paper that you can write on. Um, I actually had to open a new roll because I don't like to clean it. So I just buy a new roll when I need one, but it's just, it's see-through paper. Hi everyone. And, um, you can write on it. You can use a, um, a Sharpie and some alcohol on a, um, cotton ball. You can take that off. You can use dry erase markers on it. Um, just be careful because you know, you get that dry erase marker dust. You don't want to wipe that into your quilt. But what I love about it is that you have this, maybe you can see it better here, that black line. So it's telling you don't write across the black line. And um, Christina, the handy quilter educator, um, she, I believe she, I think she's the one who told me this. Um, she cut a big rectangle off because it is a really long roll. So I have some rolls that I have to unravel until I get to a spot that, that's clean. But she cut a square off and then used uh, painter's tape and put a painter's tape square around it. So she was able to just have that little piece and not have to worry about the big roll. Um, and then the other thing, this is a, a very large piece of um, golden threads paper. And golden threads paper is a, is, it's more than a tissue paper, but less than like printer paper. But you can draw on it and use this to make stencils. Um, I have a video of how to make stencils with this. Um, but you can use this to make stencils and if you find a design, maybe you did something on this and you really liked it and you're just like, oh, how do I quilt that? You know, this looks good, but how do I get it from preview paper to my quilt? You can put this on top of the preview paper, trace it, and then this goes right on your quilt block. And um, you can either make a stencil and use pounce pad or you can just stitch right through it and pull it off, kind of like paper piecing. So um, I hope you learned something. I hope you know, this talk about texture and especially when you're quilting something that maybe it's darker in some area, at least now you know how to attack those areas and how to think about those areas before you go in and actually start quilting them. Um, thank you for, let's always, thank you for joining me again. Follow me on social media, Adam So Fun, and that's S-E-W on Facebook and Instagram. Like and subscribe to my channel and be sure to hit that bell icon so you're notified when new videos drop. Um, check out adamsofun.com or my social media sites. I know I'm going to be doing some classes in February, so, um, or some virtual classes in February. So you're at home learning right along with me and we do everything live. And I think these ones are going to be pro stitcher related. So check those out. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just quilting. We want to laugh and we want to have a good time. You'll see you all in the next video, everyone. Bye.